professor and facilitator, Sophie has helped thousands of businesses, professionals, and communities leverage the power of the internet. Her services include coaching, seminars, social media planning and strategy sessions, workshops and webcasts. Sophie teaches online business principles at Trent University. Uh, of course, she has delivered her leveraging the power of the internet seminars and workshops to a growing number of people. She has written and published the book, Leveraging the Power of the Internet, which she reprints every four months. You have heard of Kindle, haven't you? Yeah. Okay. She holds an honors computer science degree from the University of Windsor, Ontario, and a master's of engineering in information systems from the University of Toronto. Please welcome Sophie Andrea. Thanks everyone, it's great to be here. I can't see any of you, I'm used to uh, being able to see a little bit, and I just need to find my mouse. Because of Stuart, I'm actually using a new software program called uh, Prezi. Prezi instead of PowerPoint, so we'll see how this goes. So social media, tips and tricks for the 2012 business owner. Let's put Peterborough on the map as having the best business people using social media. You guys are ahead of the game. I, I don't know, I see, sometimes I see over thousands of businesses a month in my seminars. You guys are doing extremely well, it's exciting. There are so many leaders in this room who use social media. So I'm gonna just give you some uh, quick tips and tricks. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about, up until now, only 33% of businesses have embraced social media. Only 33%. What we've been doing up till now is really looking at creating your own web within the web. And then after that, once you do that, you have to you know, create your own web within the web, your own social media, your own Facebook. And then you have to get into engagement. Why do you have to get into engagement? Engagement is how it grows. If you build it, they will not come. You need to engage. So that's what the engagement's all about. And then what happens is social media can indeed become your most powerful client lead generation tool. And that's what it's about this year. Now with how everything is aligned with regards to uh, smartphones, with regards to social media, with regards to your clients being on social media, it's now the time that it can indeed become a strong business tool. So something you may not know, there's actually someone in this room who is indeed the lead social media person. By night, he's actually Spider-Man. He was our first social media networker. But do you think Stuart and Spider, they start with S? I think that Stuart was really the first social media networker. Look at him, look at what he was talking about. He does it so naturally. So I'm gonna show you why Spider-Man was indeed the first social media networker. Social women too. He's not just catching anything, he's catching his clients. The web within the web. He's following his social thread, he's always keeping it up to date. He acts, reacts just in time. Now there's something called location-based technology. With location-based technology, you can check in with Foursquare just in time in your client's hand. Everyone trusts you. The reason you're online is you want to gain trust. And then as you engage, you reward his new clients. Life is a great big tweet up. Social woman, I have to put that in there. But I really think it's Stuart underneath that mask. So, creating your own web within the web. This is what happens every 60 minutes on the internet right now. Everyone, if, if you don't measure it, if you don't plan it, you don't create your web within the web, your clients are overwhelmed, you're overwhelmed. So you want to understand that, you know, there's 100 new LinkedIn accounts every minute, 100 and, you know, 320 new Twitter accounts every minute. All of these things are happening every minute. So you need to take a step back, and the first thing you need to look at is what would my client speak or search for if they're looking for your business? Look at this little uh, comment. You know, where do you sell Greek blinds? Roman shades are in houseware, second floor. Where do you have those shifting dumbbells? Shifting weights or shake weights are displayed next to the cash register. Excuse me, Missy. Where are those super phones? Smartphones are uh, third floor electronics. 
How long did it take you to learn all that retail speak? To hear be fluent in customer? Too long. We need to, you need to understand how does your client speak? When they go online, what words are they searching for? That's critical in everything you do online. What are they saying? Where are your clients? What time? Which days are they online? Because there's so much noise, if you happen to post something when they're not online, poof, they're not gonna see it. When are they online? Who are they already listening to online? Who do your clients already respect online? If you can get them to retweet you or to share your posts, you're golden. Every time somebody with a large following that is um, talking to my clients or I love my particular clients online, I, I run around the house, I run around, I, it's just exciting when someone retweets somebody, something of yours to their audience and they happen to have the same type of people you would like as your clients. Why do they want to hear you talk? This is number one. What will these people online, why are they following you? Why are they following you? you want, you've got to know that. Then you can determine what you're posting about. It's all about that. What are you the thought leader of? So then expand all your business processes where it makes sense on, the, on, on social media. So if you're out at an event like this and this has something to do with your business, take a picture, upload it right away. Tweet about it. If, you have, if um, you're at a conference having to do with your business and you're the thought leader on medical supplies, you're at that conference, you want to tweet about that and get that out there and put some quotes out there so you are the thought leader. Brand consistency, just like Superman, it's consistent. You know exactly it's him. He's got the exact same uh, outfit on in every single, everywhere you see him. Brand consistency is important. And post well. I have a blog that I do, and I have listed a number of different posting techniques. I listed one this morning, a post with posting techniques. I'll be listing one again on Thursday morning. And um, posting techniques, there's a, a, like I said, a lot of good people in this room that can help you with that. But post well. I'm not going to, oops, wrong one. So I'm not going to get into all of this, but everything you do online, it's, it's no different. It's just like your own traditional business. Write down the purpose of your efforts. What action do you want your uh, followers to take? Action normally is clicking on a link, because you can measure that action. I always think, and one of my posts I think said, if someone posts something or tweets something without a link to, or without a link back to an action, they should be fired. Just linking, wow, it was great today. Well, what was great today? Link back to your website. Link back to whatever you were talking about. Um, I'm going to just continue here because I have diagrams illustrating this later on. Keep it short and sweet. Statistics now show, since this has been around for such a long time now, four whole years, statistics show that posts or tweets under 80 characters get more shares than those longer ones. So if you're on Facebook where you can have longer uh, characters on Facebook, longer sentences, those under 80 characters long with a picture or with a link get shared more than those longer ones. Those that just have 80 characters with no link get shared more than longer ones. But if they also have a picture or a link to it going to further information, they get shared even more. It's very important to know that. Um, I'm going to continue because I talk about this later. It, they used to say that being online meant you had to continuously go back and forth, back and forth. That's actually a myth. What they're showing now are people that have shorter uh, posts but link somewhere have thousands of followers versus those people that are constantly going back and forth and returning uh, back and forth. You still engage, you still listen, but reply right to somebody because not everybody wants to hear your reply. So those are little uh, thought pros, thoughts that you want to think about. Readability, it's interesting. Look at the grade level that gets shared the most. The grade level is two. So big sophisticated words, people won't share that as often. And then uh, lo lo just um, with content, sex gets shared the most. So I don't know how many of you can actually tweet and post about sex that has to do with your business. But, you know, if you can, you know, uh, you know wind that in there, go for it. But other than that, I can't even read this the way this is. Everyone likes positive conversation online. It's interesting. What they're showing is people that are negative online, people stop following them. Another thing is, and this newer um, information that I, I was just reading over um, just, just probably a couple hours before this, if you put a number in your actual 
post. So, you know, great tips. But if you say five great tips, the one that said five great tips will get shared more than the one that just said great tips. People like numbers. So if you can put a number to whatever you're talking about, people will share that more than, than not. Um, interesting, those of us that have done email blasts in the past, or blasts in the past, it, we were always told, don't send it out on the weekend to a business, don't send it out on a Monday or Friday because people are too busy. However, now, people are happy it's not Fridays. That's when the most likes happen, that's when the most shares happen. So if you can get your message out on a Friday on these mediums, you want to do that because you're going to get the most shares and the most likes. So it's all about, oh, it missed one. The one it missed was the number one reason why people stop following you is because you post too often. Um, and the number two is because your posts are all marketing related. Meaning, you know, come to my seminar, come to my seminar. If that's all someone posts, they're going to stop following you. They want education. They want entertainment. If you're funny, now's the time to be funny. They want entertainment is the word. Education and entertainment at the same time. So Stuart, of course, is someone that's funny, and so you, you can let that out. Um, this is a tool called TweetDeck. TweetDeck is a tool that helps you manage your posts. What it does is it puts all your direct messages in columns, those people that are sending you direct email through Twitter or Facebook. It also puts all your mentions. Mentions is listening online. Mentions is when any, somebody has mentioned your Twitter account. So you can reply, you can do whatever it is that you want to do with that mention. But it's all right here in a list. So you can go back, say you didn't have time, go back over time and check it out. Hootsuite, TweetDeck, Sprout Social, there's a number of them that do these great tools out there. And then you can listen for just certain, uh, I was helping a, a company who was looking for uh, brain injuries. And um, so you can search for topics and then reply to those people. It's a great tool. The other nice thing with this tool is it allows you to post into the future which is important. So if you want, if you're away next week or you know you're in seminars or whatnot, you can say, I'm gonna, I know my target market is online from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. The standard, by the way, is most people are online from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. And then again, sorry, 10 a.m. until 4 p.m., 10 till 4, and then again at 8 p.m. at night. So that's when people are online. And I know I, I can see it, you know, when, uh, just in my own stats, but that's what people are, are online. So you may decide, I'd like to send something out next week at 10 and the following week at 2 on a Tuesday and on a Wednesday at 10 again because you're building buzz up towards an event that you have. That's how you want to think about it. So this is LinkedIn. I want to just give you two things before I move on to engagement that's new. One is on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, you can now add your companies to LinkedIn, but you can add a lot of information to your companies. I'm hearing a lot of people saying now they've had their profiles on LinkedIn, but they're actually adding their companies and they're getting a lot more business because they've added their companies. You go to LinkedIn and you click on companies up here and then on the far right you see this add companies. So you want to try doing that if you haven't. Um, Facebook, just quickly on Facebook, what's new for business pages? Uh, right here where it says talking about this, that was rolled out the end of last year. Talk, so you have the number of people that like you, but another number you want to watch are those people that are talking about you. So it's those people that have actually liked you or commented, that number you want to continuously increase. Why is that? They say 78% of people that will like your page is because they saw someone else liked a comment of your, a, a, a comment that you made. One of your current followers or fans liked it and their friends all saw it. On average in Canada, each person has 280 friends. In the States, it's 160 friends. So in Canada, um, some of their friends who are online saw that you liked it. They say 78% of those people that might end up liking it in the future are not because they saw your efforts, it's because they saw their friends who liked your information. So the talking about us is important because that shows you how many people after they like you are now talking about you continuously. So... What a designer Facebook page without the designer price tag? Can you hear this? Well, then I've got some great news for you. With Facebook pages, you can create your very own business page in a snap and pay way less than you would with those other guys. Here's how. First, set up the main content of your page. You can add videos, playlists, and a bunch of other stuff to customize your brand. Next, you can add your banner and upload your photos to create a photo gallery. Then, 
All that's left to do is to choose your favorite template, and our system will publish your design to Facebook in just a few simple clicks. And that's all there is to it. So all I want to share with you there is you have Facebook pages that are your standard pages I showed you a second ago, but you can also hire someone to come in and actually create a nice landing page and sit with them and say, this is the action I want people to create on, to have on my Facebook page. Then there's a ton of applications out there now that you can also use to create your own Facebook uh, business pages. So these are just tools. This one happens to be called Face It. There's um, a number of them out there, and I'm doing a, a post on, on the weekend that's going to list all of the different tools that are out there for you. Um, so after you've created it, you now need to engage. Engagement is very important. So you need to engage, because as I said, if you guys like something and all your friends see it, 78% might actually like what you've liked, compared to um, very few finding it on their own. So likes plus retweets equal growth for your company. The more likes and retweets you get, the more you're gonna grow as far as your, um, your social media growth. So 88% of people never go back to your actual Facebook page or your actual Twitter account. They never see, all, see your page again. All they're seeing are your posts on the timeline or your posts on their Blackberries or on their Android phones. So, only, so you gotta remember that. So it's all about engagement. Um, Find appropriate influencers. This is the biggest thing. Know what you're going to post about, and then find those people, I call them giants or ambassadors, those people that have already, everyone that you'd like as clients following them, and get them to retweet you or to share you. And then what happens, because 78% trust those people they're already following, that's how you end up getting followers. That's what it's about. So you want to entice these actual influencers to retweet and share you. What a lot of people do is they actually invite them to their sessions. They invite them to their events. They give these influencers coupons or asking or, or, or free passes to come to their events so that um, they can share and tweet. Measure your impact, listen and respond online. If you have original material, that's king, meaning you have your own blog and you're gonna put that through your uh, social media because your ranking goes up as you yourself being an influencer, as a knowledge expert. If you have, if you instead, you don't like creating original material on a blog or on YouTube or on photos like uh, Flickr, then perhaps instead you are the filter, because I've worked with an employment lawyer, and he does some of his own material, but he researches every morning and sends out there uh, material that he knows is good. I don't create all my own original material. I do once or twice a week if I can. But the other times I'm sending out, when I see someone's done an amazing article, I'll share that. So know what you're the thought leader on and share that material, whether it's your own or whether it's filtered material. So uh, where's it going? Clout. You gonna work? My IT technician, John Pham, was pretty stoked this summer to get a free Chevy Volt electric car for a weekend. Twitter and Facebook, why should I do a Chevy looked in the car because he's an influencer and he clicked on a perk online. What's all that? Well, he has a high clout score. It's all part of the new lexicon of social currency. Made popular by clout.com. And what is a clout? The ability of, of a person to drive action. It measures not just how big your social audience is, but more importantly, how many people retweet and like your tweets and status updates and actively engage with them. It also measures things like how influential your network is. Uh, Barack Obama liking what you say on Facebook is way more important than, than me liking what you So what this is showing is your network impact. So you've, you've, you've tweeted something or you've posted something what is the impact? So I used to go online every morning to see what my impact was. Now I go online once a week. It's a way for you to measure your own effectiveness online. I'm going back to the video, the magic lights. Oh, that's right. It's the, the content you create versus the amount of actions driven. So if you're just really noisy and you get some clicks and likes by kind of brute force, it's not going to really help you. For advertisers, it's math from heaven. They're translating status updates and tweets into ad impressions. General Motors Chevy paid Cloud to steer the free car deal to top influencers in Chicago. People they know hold sway. 
and are likely, but not obligated, to tweet good things about their car should they have an occasion to drive it. Philip, on how to help people increase their cost score. It comes down to being engaging and being engaged. She predicts a day when high social currency can rival high personal net worth, and when a high cost score will be worth more than a black American Express, or high costers who drive purchasing decisions within their networks are given the same perks as high rollers and VIPs. A fashion night out party in Florida recently required guests to have a cloud score of 40 or higher just to get in. So what about metric fatigue? Why should a social media user care about it? Okay, so I just wanted to share that with you as to what cloud is. So, okay, so you can use that tool to measure how effective you are, how engaging you are. However, how do you also find influential people that you'd like them to retweet your measure? So what you can use is there's a tool called, another tool we found, called wefollow.com. And wefollow.com, Janine's not here, is she? No. Yeah, because I, I, I saw that she was trying to attend. But Janine is the most influential chick in this area. Um, we follow is not complete, it's not 100%, but it's a nice way to start. So say you're trying to grow your business in Oshawa, and you can go to wefollow, put in the word Oshawa, it'll come up with those people are the most influential. So if they, if they happen to tweet about things that are important to your business, then it'd be nice if you can get to know them and have them retweet your information. It's, uh, it's pretty exciting. So these are some tools that are coming out now that are that would really, they're concrete and they're helpful. Um, excuse me, another one you wanna do to help yourself is you, you've, you've put your Facebook page together, maybe you've used a great, uh, you know, a, a great landing page on it, a welcome page, you've got a contest going on, you've got your own website. What this does is website grader, grader.com is where you go, and it has one for websites, one for Facebook, one for Twitter, and it tells you a long report on what you can do better. And I find these tools really exciting. Uh, I'm kind of obviously a geek, so I like uh, reports, tons of reports as to which links are working, which links aren't working, what you can do to improve. So this is something called SproutSocial.com. Sprout Social, I like, it, it's, it acts like a tweet deck where you can listen online, you can post into the future, but it also takes all of the demographics, all those people that you are, that are following you on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and it brings them all together and tells you what's, what sex are they, uh, how old are they, where do they live, um, how many followers have you had in the last little while on Twitter or on Facebook, how many retweets have you had. So if you've done something this week, like you posted one of your blogs, what was the impact? You need to measure what the impact was. So this is a great little tool. When I talk about the next part where your uh, efforts and your engagement actually converts into clients, I'm going to come back to Sprout Social. So how do you make all this happen? It's engagement, but there's also applications out there. What's happened to you now is all these, I don't know where my cell phone is, oh my god, um, but that's okay. Uh, new apps are out there on your cell phone. So many applications, I, I heard a, a, a number once talking about how many different applications are out there. There's a tremendous number. So if you're using TweetDeck, you wanna find TweetDeck for your, for your uh, mobile app. If you're using, there's one I started using recently, it's called Inbox Backwards, however you spell that. So the word Inbox Backwards, has anyone used that? It's phenomenal, it takes all of your different uh, contacts, brings it together, because I use a bunch of different content, Outlook and, and, and uh, Gmail, a bunch of them, brings it together. If I've had contact with, say, Winston, and he and I have emailed together back and forth, it brings up all my emails that I've had with him in the past. It also brings up who else I may have emailed with Winston back and forth, and then it, um, it's just phenomenal. I can put in just a couple words. Maybe I can't remember Winston's last name, even though it's pretty simple art. But say I can't remember his last name, I don't remember, per it brings up every Winston I know from all of my different contacts. I can't tell you how effective it is. But now on Google Chrome, it also has small applications. Sorry, applications for small business owners. Phenomenal applications. If you don't have Google Chrome, I really recommend you download it. I've replaced my Firefox and my um, Internet Explorer with Google Chrome. You can find accounting software. You can find project management software. Um, you can find so many different things. I don't know if any of you saw my blog. I've now created a little comment that goes on the top of my blog. And I created that with Pixton. Uh, there's uh, this presentation itself I created with this Prezi.com, as I mentioned. It's all on uh, Google Chrome, and I haven't had to pay for anything. So I'm just saying it's, there's a lot of tools out there that will help you become more effective. <coughs> mm 
This may or may not be one of them. <laughs> I don't think I like this one anyhow. Oh, there we go. It's loading. This is wildfire. If you want to uh, set up a more sophisticated uh, system for your Facebook and a contest, it actually manages contests for you. Here you go. Social media. The potential for marketers is enormous, but the challenges are almost as great. How can I use Facebook and Twitter to get real results? How can I stay ahead of my competition? How do I know if I'm actually succeeding? Wildfire Social Marketing Suite was built to tackle all these challenges by combining all the tools you need in one easy-to-use, high-performance platform. We take the guesswork out of social media marketing and set you up for success. Whether you're part of an agency, a large brand, or a small business, our do-it-yourself promotion builder gives you all the tools you need to easily grow and engage your fans, followers, and leads with social promotions like contests, coupons, and giveaways. With our flexible and powerful social page builder, Wildfire makes it simple to create engaging custom landing pages for Facebook, websites, and other social channels, whether you have a team of designers or you're on your own. So I just wanted to share that with you because it's kind of a neat tool. Um, I work with um, a number of different companies. One is Algonquin, Algonquin Outfitters, and they've been using Wildfire. They swear by it for a while, and they're using it to upload videos to their Facebook account so people come back to their Facebook account, and they, um, and they say it's been extremely successful. You only pay for it while the uh, campaign is going on. This is another little tool that I love that shows you how um, um, It'll just take a second to load Foursquare, which is becoming more and more popular in, in various areas because of the location-based technology in your cell phones and your smartphones. People can check in. Here's a business uh, application so for Foursquare. Well, it's pretty simple. We let you pick a venue on Foursquare that you want to watch. And we take a look at Twitter to make sure we see anyone who checks in at that venue. Now, at the same time, you've already created a coupon on Tweet2. could be for anything. Discounts, freebies, whatever you want to create a coupon for and you've pre-written 10 messages to introduce this coupon to people. We watch Twitter. When anyone checks in at the Foursquare venue you've selected, we randomly pick one of your 10 messages, send them a link to your coupon. Let me give you an example. Let's say you own a bar and a grill somewhere downtown, right next door to a football stadium. Somebody checks in, I'm at the big game. We notice it's a check-in on Foursquare at the venue you're watching, and reply immediately with one of your 10 messages and a link to your coupon. Or if you own a vitamin store, and you're near a gym, same kinds of applies. Or even if you're a lawyer, and you I just think this is in the States. Watch every single emergency room in Indianapolis, whatever the case is, <laughs> where my potential customers gather and check in on Foursquare? What can I offer them? And then create your campaign at tweet2.com. So that's tweet2.com. I uh, found that for another uh, company that I'm working with. And um, they're going to monitor a bunch of different, they're trying to promote, they're trying to become Foursquare ready, is uh, the term that we. Uh, created for that community. It's actually a community, a, a tourism group. And I think it's a fabulous idea. And they're looking at ways to encourage people to come to their area and thank them for shopping local. So, or thank them for shopping at their uh, folks that are using, uh, that, are, um, that are in their area. So it's pretty exciting. So you as a business owner can use that. And imagination is really gonna be your only roadblock this year. Um, it's pretty exciting what you can do. So basically what happens is these tools can become a very powerful lead generation tool. If I look at Sprout Social again, what excited me about so Sprout Social is say someone following you is called Juicy Lucy on Twitter. And you don't know who Juicy Lucy really is, but what it does is it brings in all of their contact information from LinkedIn, if they happen to be on LinkedIn, from Facebook, and it indicates what their, if, they, if, if it can find its email, it puts it into a contact place on Sprout Social. It also, you can click on Juicy Lucy's history and activity and see everything she has ever tweeted about or Facebooked about. You can click on their photos, see all their photos. So now all this person who is an unknown Juicy Lucy becomes a real human that you can interact with that becomes a, a real client. So it's, it's taking from all this noise that's going on up there, creating it yourself, to getting into engagement, to then becoming real humans. And this is new, this kind of uh, so, social CRM is what it's called, social customer relationship management, being able to make um, you know, contents, content 
out of the humans that are following you. It's new, but there are tools out there that are now uh, coming to, to bear, and um, it's really exciting. So sorry, Captain, but we have a bit of a problem. One of our passengers, oh my goodness, oh no, we have a bit of a problem. How many Twitter followers does he have? So it's, it's important for you to know that anything that happens through Twitter, a customer experience, it's out there right away, so you do want to listen for it. So that's all I have to say because I only had uh, 20 minutes, so I tried to put a lot in there. And um, so this is one of, again, the tools that I, I used uh, from Google Chrome, and it's a cartoon. So um, the uh, uh, seminars that we do and the strategy, I'm actually gonna have a local office soon, I can't wait. And I'll be doing more coaching sessions from my office. And we have our, um, also our workshops. And um, my uh, partner, my husband is there. He's got some brochures to our workshops if you're interested. What we're doing now is um, basic workshops, setting it up. Two weeks later, a webinar, because I find I've been doing a lot of workshops and um, everyone comes to the workshop, they spend a great deal of time, and they go back and they're really busy in their own job. So I find what works a little better is you do the workshop, two weeks later we do a webinar, then if you want to go more advanced, two weeks after that there's another workshop where we're actually talking about Grow It. So if you've already built your stuff, just come to the Grow It workshops. In the Grow It, we use these tools to help you grow, help you grow, um, grow your followings and turn them into real, dedicated, loyal clients. And uh, then again, two weeks after that, we're going to have another webinar. So I hope you found that helpful. And uh, Stuart, I can, I'll be glad to post this if you like. Okay.